this is up there for really exciting motorcycles. I'm a 20 stone fatty, it still feels fast this. This bike is the epitome of fun. Welcome to a beautiful October afternoon and welcome to a beautiful Yamaha MT-09 SP. Now I've not ridden an MT-09 since about 2016. Were they even out in 2016? I can't remember, I think they were. Anyway, this is a completely revised bike from that original version. The original one had a lot of flex in the chassis. It was a little bit snatchy on the throttle. This one is a very different kettle of fish. So if you're interested in the M29 SP, I mean, this is almost a litre bike. This is 890cc triple in this machine. So very different to the MT10, but only 100cc less than the MT10. So how is it going to compare to the MT10? How is it going to compare to the Street Triple RS I rode recently and the 890 Ducar? So this is a bike I've been really excited about trying. And I can tell you, this has really, really impressed me so if you're interested in this beautiful machine make yourself a quick cup of tea and chop C roll the intro we get going is that secure bloody better be so jumping aboard this fine steed you'll notice it now has a tft you've got a nice sculpted tank and the first thing i noticed jumping on this it's got exactly the same switch gear as the mt10 and it's actually got exactly the same features and functions as the mt10 including cruise control separation of wheelie control and traction control slide control i mean yamaha have thrown everything at this for a middleweight bike, so that is really impressive. It's actually got more of a direct throttle feel than the MT-10. It's a little bit laggy on the MT-10. This actually feels much more direct. I've got everything, got my glasses, spectacles, testicles, wallet and watch, we're sorted. <laughs> Jumping on this bike, I was so surprised when I got on this. I knew a lot of people have said, oh, try an MT-09 SP chops. Well, just an MT-09 will do because you love it. It's a really fun little bike. And as you know, I absolutely love the MT-10. And I thought well, it won't be as good as the MT-10. It won't be as much fun as an MT-10, surely. Well, I've jumped on this and I can tell you, I actually think this bike is more fun than the MT-10. It's 117 horsepower, I think. 93 newton meters of torque and the reason i think it's more fun is because it only weighs 190 kilos fully fueled so it's got a much more agile feel to it the mt10 really handed well now we did a recent super duke versus mt10 comparison with greg which i'll link at the top you know and i there was something about the mt10 i just loved because it's i think it's just its ease of use and and that beautiful cross plane motor well this is very different this feels a lot more agile a lot more nimble on its feet, not as stable as the MT-10, but a lot more nimble. You could argue a lot more fun. And this engine, this, this triple cross-plane engine, CP3 motor, what an absolute gem this motor is. And what are we stuck behind here? It's another death machine. The old MT-09, I have ridden this bike before, it was the original one. I've also ridden the Velocity Moto sort of RD350 converted XR900, which is the same motor, same chassis. The old bike was brilliant, lots of fun, but even though the old one that I tried had upgraded fork cartridges and an upgraded rear shock, there was just an inherent amount of flex within the chassis. It never really handled. You could never ever get rid of your chicken strips on your tyres because it never gave you the confidence to really put it on its side and it, it got a bit out of shape when you really tried to push it on. It was brilliant fun but it never really handled. This new one is completely different. They've retained the fun factor so they've retained the, the agility and the quick direction changes and the light front ends but it actually feels rigid enough now. They've also dropped the headstock 30 millimetres in the fork. So the front end of the bike 
actually runs 30 mil lower. I mean, it is a short bike, so it's got a short wheelbase. You're sat upright, the bars are high, there's not much weight over that front wheel. Even though they've dropped the front end by 30 mil, there's still not masses of, front, of weight over that front wheel. And I think that does ultimately dictate how fast you can push it, because there's a little bit of a vagueness to the front end, but the handling is much improved. Woohoo! <laughs> Oh, it's such a fun bike, this. It is such a fun machine. I mean, I have to say, I mean, I love the MT-10. I love that cross-plane R1 motor. I mean, it's an incredibly smooth machine, but this is also so smooth. The throttle response is absolutely perfect. The older bike, you know, was quite snatchy. The fueling is beautiful on this. The vibrations are sort of non-existent, even though this is cross-plane. You've got that little bit of a... A little bit of a buzz to it, you know, very similar actually to the, obviously the Street Triple, but no more, even though it's a bigger capacity, there's certainly no more vibrations than what's on the, the Street Triple. You can't feel anything through the pegs, nothing really through the seat, a tiny little bit of vibration through the bars, but oh, there's a red kite, but nothing to cause you any discomfort, you know, it, it's honestly, I can't think, I can tell you now, even though we've only just started this review. I have zero niggles with this bike. I have no issues or things I'd like done differently. This bike has been executed perfectly. There's only one thing I can highlight which I don't like on this machine, and that's the fuel gauge. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm, it's stupid, isn't it, the fuel gauge? The fuel gauge is my only criticism because it's you get like three blocks of fuel and there's no countdown to them. The MT-10 is exactly the same. I forgot to mention this on the MT-10. You don't know how much fuel you've used until you've reached half a tank. The first half of the tank, you've, it still says I've got a full tank. And I know I filled it up about 70 miles ago and it still says I've got a full tank. So my only criticism is the very inaccurate fuel gauge, but blimey, I'm going to excuse it that because everything else is absolutely superb. When you start to push on a bit, because you are sat back quite a lot and there isn't that much weight over the front end, <laughs> and because there's no sort of aero, there's no fairing to sort of push the front of the bike down, it gets a bit lively. So you can get a little bit of a waggle on, on these bumpy back lanes. It's an exciting bike to ride because the front's coming up a bit, it's flapping itself. I don't think that's a steering damper either. So I think you've got to be a little bit careful with this machine, but it makes such an exciting ride. You know me, I'm all about engagement and rider engagement and excitement. This is up there for really exciting motorcycles. Because, you know, ultimately, I guess it's a little bit flawed from outright performance, but it's got the fun factor. It's something we know, this is my criticism with the uh, Pikes Peak Multistrada. That had the performance. That didn't really have the fun factor because it was too good. This isn't too good because there's not enough weight over the front wheel to, to be an ultimate handling, you know, performance machine, but it makes it a lot of fun. And I'd rather have fun than out and out speed for a road machine. The engine is so urgent. I mean, because it's almost 900cc, you've got so much initial pull, sort of so far down in the rev range, sort of 3,000 revs, it just, you know, I'm almost, you'd hold on with two hands because it's throwing me off the back. It's got so much initial grunt, much more, I think, really than the 890 Duke or the Street Triple. Yeah, the power's down. The overall top power, the top end's down. This is only 118 horsepower. Those bikes are sort of pushing a 128 on the Street Triple RS. But this just has that better initial grunt and I would say mid-range as well. But it does lose, lose that a little bit at the top, but again, it doesn't really matter because this is about being a fun road bike. This has got the power where you want it at the bottom end. And that makes sort of overtaking a real breeze on this machine. Any crests in the road, bit of throttle, front comes up. They've not gone silly with chasing top speed and brake horsepower figures. They could have made this bike probably 140 horsepower, 145 horsepower, but they would have sacrificed that brilliant bottom end. And that is what makes this bike so good.
The bike also comes on Bridgestone S22 tyres, so really decent rubber. You know, they're not skimping on the rubber on this machine. It's a little bit damp, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful here, which is a little bit of a shame. But it, it falls into the bend, you know, it feels nice and stable once it's down. You know, providing you don't hit any big bumps in the road. But there's a little bit of lack of feel from the front end because there's a, you know, there's a lack of weight over it, but massive improvement from the old bike. And just the sound of it, the sound of this bike, it sounds incredible. Absolutely sounds incredible, that triple engine. The noise you get through the airbox. If you haven't realized already, I really like this. The riding position, this <laughs> got a bit carried away. Let's talk about the riding position now. You're very upright, so it is a bit like the MT-10 where you're sat right on your bum, your bars are really high. You know, it is, it's, the pegs are right below, a bit forward from the hips even. So, you know, it's not a particularly sporty riding position, but I think it suits the bike well as a, as a road bike. I mean, it's, it's a traditional riding position. The seat is also very wide, like the MT-10, a very wide seat, but there's not that much padding in it. So Yamaha do do a comfort seat, of course. So I think if I was to buy one of these, I'd probably invest in the comfort seat and with the wide seat plus a bit more padding I think it will be supremely comfortable bike for longer distances. Let's give it a little bit of a tickle. I do have the wheelie control turned off because you can turn wheelie and traction you can separate them on this bike and you can leave it off. You know, once you've turned it off in your mode it will stay off in your mode which is brilliant. So let's give it a little bit of a tickle up here. Let's be careful because it's going to want to lift all the time. It's not shy, this bike. It's really got some very usable power. It, you know, it doesn't feel like a little middleweight. I'm a 20 stone fatty, it still feels fast, this, you know, even with me on it. So I touched on it back there, but the electronics are really good because you can isolate the traction and the wheelie control and you can turn off wheelie control. It's got slide control, it's got cruise control. You know, it's got all of the switch gear from the MT-10 and it's got all of the features from the MT-10. You've also got adjustable brake control as well. So, I mean, it's, it's quick shift to, you know, it's got everything you'd ever really need. It's, it's, you know, it's really impressive that they've packed so much tech onto this bike. And I think this bike is £11,300 with all of that tech. You don't have to buy, buy anything extra once you bought it. It's all on there for eleven three. The brakes are also pretty decent. We know the Japanese bikes don't have the best front brake. This one isn't bad. It doesn't, it doesn't jump out at you straight away. That, that being the weak point of the bike. You can put, you know, it's reasonable. It's a little bit wooden, but it's reasonable. The rear brake is also really good. I actually prefer to do a little bit of rear braking on this machine into the corners because because I think the weight transfer and the way the, that front end feels you know, it doesn't feel overly nice when you're putting a lot of front brake in it's better just to tickle the rear to set your corner speed as you go in but yeah the handling is a million times better than the original bike they've really improved it and it still retained, you know, all of the fun as well. That's what's impressive. They take, they take, Yamaha have taken some really good decisions with the design of this bike and how they set it all up. So here it is, the MT-09 SP. I think looks absolutely fantastic. I love it. Only a few things I don't like. The exhaust is like one piece. So it's like a one piece exhaust with a little outlet at the bottom here which of course you can't just change the end can then you're going to have to change the whole system if you want to get a bit more volume out of it so i'm not so keen on that i wish it had like a separate end can so you could change the exhaust without having to change the whole system which is obviously going to be expensive the forks are great i love these kyb forks they've ripped off the olin's gold color to perfection <laughs> and i love the black stanchions at the bottom there looks really good it's got braided it's not got braided lines it's got rubber hoses but the brake performance is actually very, very good on this. It has got a radial master cylinder, but a Nissan, not, not a Brembo, but it is radial. And I think that helps. The, the brakes, 
you don't need to think you've got to do anything to the brakes. They actually work fine. You've got the little running lights here, and then you've got this single projector bulb, which is high and low beam. So that, that projector does your high and your low, and you've got the little running light. I think it looks good. I think it looks mean. And I was really not sure on this whole dark side of Japan when they came out with these bikes, but it's really growing on me, this. Odin's rear shock, like I say, with the remote preload. Looks really good. The whole engine finish is really nice on the Yamahas as well. I mean, everything is painted in like this gunmetal colour. So it's all sort of gunmetal finish. There's no bare aluminium engine cases. I like it when things are painted. And even the frame is painted with that same sort of gunmetal colour. So yeah, I actually think the frame finish is it's nice and smooth. You know, the MT-10 is a little bit rough. You know, it's a rough finish. I actually prefer this sort of smoother painted uh, finish to the frame. The rear foot brake reservoir is on the passenger pegs. So if you want to take off your passenger pegs, you're going to have to relocate that somehow. Look at that. Brushed aluminium with lacquer. Oh, God, I love that. Oh, that blipper is just so good. Like I said, a quick shift of blipper on this bike is so lovely. I mean, I think Yamaha do that so well. It's a bit like Suzuki. And the Japanese, what they do well is they just put a bike together that just feels really nice to ride. You know, all the mechanical bits and bobs, the gears, the, everything you're touching just has a really nice feel to it. And uh, Yamaha have done a brilliant job with this. And I have to say, I think Yamaha are the only Japanese brand which is really bringing out exciting sort of middleweights. I think, you know, these, these, these CP motors, these cross-plane motors, they're competing directly with the European stuff on engagement and fun. And I think in a lot of circumstances, they're, they're beating the European stuff. But none of the other Japanese manufacturers are, really seem to be trying that hard, do they? They're always a little bit safe. Yamaha are really putting it out there and I think they have to be commended for that. They're making some fantastic bikes at the moment. And of course this engine is in the Tracer. That new Tracer GT has this engine in, so I'm going to have to try and get my hands on that I think. And maybe do a bit of a trip on that. Because I love this engine, it's brilliant, it's, it's way exceeded my expectations this motor. You could argue the TFT is a little bit small compared to some of the competition but okay yeah but it's got outside air temperature it's got a fuel gauge it's got time you know it's got everything you need on it i don't really care about tfts it's certainly better than the triumph street triple with that hideous layout i mean that may have a, a physically bigger display but it's got that ridiculous rev counter layout it's just it's in really small sort of text so you can't actually read what it says this is much better, even though it's smaller, it's clearer. You know, try and take note. You can turn the wheelie control off, but it doesn't have a light to turn my wheelie controls off. It's just off. I know it's off because I've got it in the manual traction settings where I've turned it off, but I've still got my traction on, even though I've got my wheelie control off. And I can turn the bike on and off, and that's just it. I don't have to go in every time and turn the wheelie control off. So overall, I am very impressed with this bike. So I can't even bring you any niggles apart from that fuel gauge. It's easy to find neutral. There's no vibrations. It's actually pretty reasonable on fuel as well. So I would suggest anyone who likes a fun, engaging bike to go and test ride an MT-09. The, the, the SP is really good, but I suspect the standard one is equally as good. 11,300 pounds you know it's not ridiculous money and it seems it's, it, once you've ridden it it seems like incredible value I mean I <laughs> I know I always say this but I actually really would not mind one of these I would really like one of these in the garage just to take out and thrash around and have a bit of fun because it is such a fun bike and I think that is what it's all about this bike is the epitome of fun and that for me is what motorcycling is all about. See you next time, guys.